Hello everyone and welcome to a launch fest with Realism Overhaul in Kerbal Space Program 1.7.1. So it's been about a month since I did the previous launch fest, which was in 1.6.1, and in this launch fest I want to do rockets I didn't do there. And so we see here a Gemini Titan 2. You saw the little nozzles twitching there, uh, trying to control roll, and I used SAS to stabilize that. There's going to be a lot of that in this video. That seems to happen a lot more in this version than in uh, KSP 1.3.1, where the KOS scripts I've got were written. And you saw me setting up the MechJeb windows because I think this might have been out of my first flight or one of the first flights in 1.7.1 here. And this is from the FASA mod as we get ready for hot staging right there and release of the first stage. Everything is looking good. Well, I say everything is looking good. However, we do get this blue phase between 100 kilometers and 140 kilometers, which we also saw in KSP 1.6.1. And also that horizon issue, which clears up at 167 kilometers. And I think that's because RSS VE, Real Solar System Visual Enhancements, isn't working right in this version. And Scatterer isn't updated for KSP 1.7.1 as far as I can figure either. So that's probably the issue. Um, those two are having problems. But the faster rocket was working fine, though I might have to tweak the KOS script a little bit for all of these, basically for roll. It seems to need a little bit of a tweaking. Now this is of course the Soyuz. This is from Rear Nick's uh, Soviet rockets, and uh, the Soyuz spacecraft is from the Soyuz spacecraft pack. And well, what can I say? It's got a lot of nozzles, and that means a lot of lag with smoke screen and real plumes and yeah of course it's because the particle count is limited to a thousand that we have these short little plumes right there but then if I want to extend those plumes as we'll see in a later bit I will have to deal with even more lag so we release the boosters and get a few more frames I didn't speed up the videos because I wanted to show you what the performance was like compared to my 1.3.1 videos, which I also generally do not speed up except in certain circumstances. So you can take a look at the 1.3.1 videos and compare. I still feel like 1.3.1 is more stable than 1.6.1 and 1.7.1, though I think 1.7.1 is more stable than 1.6.1. 1.6.1 I got a few crashes in, uh, usually for RAM issues, it seemed, oddly enough. Oh, uh, we got a little bump there because of bad timing on the launch script, so I'm gonna have to fix that. That might be down to the launch script being for a different version of Soyuz than this one. And so we went a spinning, and we would have to abort because I can't control that spin. The stage is not very good at stopping something like this. The verniers are not powerful enough. I slowed it down a bit here after taking manual control. But it's not good enough. So, wobbly thing goes off. Orbital module should go off as well. There we go. And then we come back down. Now, when you start up Realism Overhaul in 1.7.1, you'll get a warning that deadly reentry and real heat aren't compatible. But it seems like it's all right ish, given our relatively low velocity coming back down. It's still using a little bit of a blazer, but not much, so it seems about right, maybe. Now I forgot something here. You have to remove the thermal covers on this spacecraft to deploy the parachute. Let's try to figure out what's wrong with the parachute deployment. I forgot to remove the thermal covers. So you'll have to right click on it and remove thermal covers before, before deploying the parachute. Unfortunately the Kerbals perish because of that, so don't make that mistake. So, we did not do previously the electric toothbrush or the Thor Able rocket. And so here we go with the Thor Able rocket. And this is from the US Rockets Pack from Raider Nick. And we're carrying a Pioneer 5. Technically, the Pioneer 5 was supposed to go interplanetary, but this launch script was for some reason configured to a high orbit, so it's not going to go interplanetary. It's not going to stay close enough to the Earth to really get the uh, Oberth effect boost, so it's going to end up close to escape, but not quite there. So blue phase, separation, able ignition. So far, rocket-wise, we are all right. Mainly what I do the launch fests for is to check out the mods to see if there are any problems in the new version, right? For instance, disappearing rockets, uh, which was sort of a surprise. 
And, uh, oh, we actually deployed solar panels on the little probe there ahead of time. And anyway, it's rolling. You can see how high it is. It's way too high to actually make a proper interplanetary burn with this. But it's got to ignite that booster. And that's looking okay. So everything else is working fine. The KOS scripts, like I said, need some work. And I don't know exactly why that is, but KOS makes changes with each version as well. And my scripts are all written for 1.3.1, so a lot of changes have accumulated. Anyway, that made orbit. This is the Explorer 1 on a Juno 1 rocket, modified redstone. And I used the craft file that came with Realism Overhaul, and that had one little problem. It didn't have HTP in the tank, thanks to Satellite 999 for pointing that out. The engine now requires HTP, but the craft file was made at a time when it didn't require HTP. So, snuck HTP in. That might mess up the burn time. I don't know. Anyway, off it goes to triumphant music. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't have the music credit up there like I normally do because I was using this instance of OBS to record the Apollo 11 videos where I sort of credit the OC Remix songs and other soundtracks a little bit differently than I do here. So yeah, that's why the credit is missing. Sorry about that. Usually fastidious about that. Anyway, here we go with the upper bit of Juno 1 that has to spin up for the SRB stages. And it didn't do that right. <laughs> it did not do that right at all. So there's a problem with the script again. Yep, that, uh, that is not supposed to happen right there. I have to manually stage the other sets of the SRBs. This wasn't a very good trajectory, and I think the fuel in the first stage was a little bit off because of the way I put in the HTP after the fact instead of pulling the part out from the part listing. Anyway, so that did not make orbit, just a little bit shy there. Uh, that was from the FASA pack, the redstone rocket basically. And uh, this is a Juno 2, and this is from Raider Nick's US rockets pack. You can see the verniers doing the rolly thing. Even in 1.3.1, they sort of did that. Oh, well, there's only one vernier on here. But again, SAS stabilizes that, but you have to run or turn off SAS when it wants to stage. And we'll see why that is in a moment. It messes up the staging if you don't turn it off. You can see it's sort of pointing upward. And then uh, this is basically the same thing that happens on the Juno 1, where it's supposed to orient and start doing the roll. But uh, SAS is now fighting against it. Basically, to stop it from doing the roll twitching, SAS is fighting against it, but fights against it on the first stage in a way that's constructive. Here, not so constructive. So I have to turn it off, and then you see it immediately turned to where it needed to be and started rolling properly. So this is a Pioneer 3-4. It also was supposed to go into interplanetary space, but again, our trajectory wasn't great, and I'll have to work on that. So basically my KOS scripts in 1.3.1 aren't doing so well in 1.7.1 right now. At least, you know, this makes over two. And there's still one more stage it could probably can't get out. No, I don't think so. It's pretty high though. It was pointing a little bit closer to prograde. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway. Here is a Cygnus, I think this is Raidernik Cygnus on uh, Kartoffel Kuchin's Antares rocket. This is from way back. This is an old, old version of these. And this is, a, this is an Antares 120, which is uh, an old version with the uh, version of the AJ26 engines, which were versions of the NK33 engines from the N1 rocket. And we see the roll twitching, but in this case the thrust wave ratio is so high that I didn't want SAS interfering with the KOS script. So yes, um, this is the staging for the entire rocket. It's a little bit peculiar. It stages the first stage off, stages the fairings, stages that inner stage which had RCS on it, which was supposed to point it in the right direction and then stages the upper stage SRB, which does have gimbling on it. But yeah, that's an interesting little sequence it does during a minor coast, not a very long coast. 
And this SRB was enough to get the Cygnus spacecraft to orbit. Though there was a little bit of a problem with the nodes being messed up. It used to have three nodes, but now uh, this only has two nodes. And that's a complicated issue, but we couldn't separate the Cygnus spacecraft because of that. The craft file was originally made with it attached to the other node. Anyway, here is the Antares 230, which is the current version of Antares using the RD-181 engine. And still with the roll wiggle. Uh, but this time I used SAS. And the problem is uh, the launch script, even though this was supposed to be a launch script for the 230, yeah, the timing was a bit off. So the first stage was still on when that staging occurred. Otherwise, we got rid of the fairings, get rid of the inner stage. You can see that the Antares 230 has a longer second stage than the last one. Oop, this is going a little bit awry. And okay, back pointing the right way, though we accidentally extended the solar panels. A lot of these craft files have the solar panels and antennae extending on action group one. Unfortunately, I had reserved Action Group 1 for Fairing Jettison because in our collaborative career mode on Twitch, uh, Nadav's launch script, Nadav also wrote, wrote uh, KOS launch script, uh, uses Action Group 1 for Fairing Jettison, so yeah, a bit complicated there. Anyway, Vanguard Rocket. Well, the Vanguard Rocket, the upper stage, the able stage, is from Raider Nix US Rockets Pack, but the lower bit is just a procedural tank. And there's a procedural tank texture called Vanguard, which you should just use for that. The engine, uh, there are various engines from like stock extensions, Raider Nix Pack, and I, no, I think maybe Raider Nix Pack. I forget if he has that engine or somebody else does. There are a lot of Vanguard engines floating around. Anyway, so all this upper bit is from Raider Nix Packs. It's just the first stage that isn't. And that's a Vanguard 2. Vanguard 1 is smaller, it's really tiny. Vanguard 2 is a bit bigger, and then Vanguard 3 is the biggest one. They're all still in orbit as far as I know. So, they're gonna hang out for like a few hundred years. Vanguard 1 is the oldest object still in orbit. So that works fine, and that seemed to get to an orbit that would take a long time to deorbit from. So that's good. Next up, the FASA Atlas with its Agena. And of course, I launched many of these during the Mission Profiles videos, but there's a quirk now. Since 1.6.1, that little uh, engine decoupler for the booster engines, you have to enable crossfeed on it, except I think that's now fixed, so you don't have to worry about that, but with the making of this video at the time I did, I needed to enable crossfeed on that. That was different. I also messed up the roll there, but the launch could handle that fine. Still some roll twitchiness, but it's mostly on the verniers in this case. So not too noticeable, hopefully. Maybe. They're still sort of flinging them around. And there goes the booster engines. But now there was a little bit of an issue. I think it was because the fairings were supposed to jettison here, and instead it decided to do the staging because of the way the staging was. And really, the fairings should not have jettisoned there. And on my mission profile videos, the fairings would not have jettisoned there. So I don't know why that staging happened, to be honest. Seems to me that it shouldn't have, and that caught me by surprise. But again, not a rocket problem. The mod is working fine. That's definitely a KOS issue. Well, we basically had to wait till that ran out, and then... It tried, uh, the KOS script is still running, it tried to ignite the Gina engine, but because the trajectory was so messed up by then, it decided to point straight at the ground, so that was not good. So this is SLS, this is the Space Launch System mod. I forget who made, made this, but it's been a long time. It's been a long time since I picked this up from the forums. I don't know if it's been updated at all for like years. So, the first time, I discovered that the RS-25s that came with the pack weren't operating quite right. They weren't providing thrust. I'll have to figure that out some other time. So I used engines from the real engine pack instead. And so these are RS-25s from the real engine pack. 
and they work, so that's good. Not, unfortunately, a bit of an incorrect initial roll in the program there. Now at two kilometers, well, what can I say? This happened. Yep, but note the little extra part there, extra orange part up there, it's gonna disappear at four kilometers instead. Just keep an eye on it. And there it goes. So it gets more and more peculiar with these things. <laughs> so now we've got a two-stage disappearing act. Um, so, and the RD-843 identified in the invisible invisibility engine video is not involved here. So this is a different part. And it doesn't look like it's an engine part that caused it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's causing this. But we did run some tests to eliminate possible parts. Okay, well that that is just all wrong. So, yeah, that is not going to work. doesn't have enough delta V. We are trying to bring Skylab to orbit with an SLS-1B. This is a 1B, not, a, not an SLS-1. Anyway, we try again, this time without the upper stage. So we ditched the 4RL-10 upper stage, you know, the EUS upper stage on the SLS, on the hope that that was what was causing the problem. But as you can see, it wasn't. And But interesting disappearing there, still a two-stage disappearing act. Still different. Now again, the bottom engines there, which are still visible, are not from this SLS mod, they're from the real engine pack. The SRBs are from the Space Launch System mod, but they didn't disappear. Neither did the decouplers, which I really put should have put some extra separatrons. I think the nose cone separatrons aren't firing either. This is the inside of Raider Nix uh, Skylab. I think I might have shown this in the 1.611 video, I forget. He asked because he was interested to see if there was a Kerbal in the shower, but I only had four Kerbals, just the usual four, Jeb, Bill, Bob, and Valentina. So one of the Kerbals was not in the shower. If I had six Kerbals, apparently one of them would be. Not sure. So, if I had controlled the rocket, without the upper stage, the rocket would have been able to get Skylab into orbit fine, but because I wasn't controlling the rocket and the launch script was written with the upper stage in mind, um, it overshot on the apoapsis and didn't quite get it to orbit properly. I checked a few other things on Skylab, but then moved on. Well, one big rocket deserves another, but this is the biggest that's going to occur in this video. This is Vulcan, with eight of the boosters that are on Energia, and an extra upper stage called Vesuvius. And I fixed the plumes, but there's a lot of uh, particles that are necessary for this, because there are a lot of nozzles at the bottom of this, more than on N1, in fact, and it creates a lot of lag. I even tried to bump it up to 100,000 particles and it actually generated 45,000 and that was really painful for my computer. My computer has been really overworked lately. I've been running it overnight for the Apollo 11 videos and uh, oh so this was during the live stream and we were getting close to the end of it after a few hours of doing a whole bunch of launches and it didn't crash during those few hours so we did all these launches uh, except for the first two in this video. All the other launches were done in one session during the live stream. Those fairings don't have a collider, well, not a full collider on them, which is probably for the best, but obviously we need separatrons on those, that's not how they're supposed to work. Now the upper stage, I, I tried to fix it, but this RD-57M engine doesn't have plume. It's working right now. It fired. The RCS also wasn't working, but I think I know what the problem was there, it had a bad fuel configuration. So that was Deku's Energia mod, and I wrote the RO configuration for that. That's not part of RO right now. Uh, you'll have to ask me for the file, but I'm still working on it, obviously. This is Raider Nix Dnieper rocket, which launches out of a silo, and has all sorts of interesting bits on this launch. Interesting KOS script uh, for all those bits. And still a roll wobble. The SAS is not a good idea with this because of the really high thrust to weight ratio, so I just let it do its roll wobble. And then off that goes. I decided to make this the last rocket 
that we would launch for the launch fest because it's so distinctive. And aside from the distinctive launch, there is the whole backward upper stage business, which you are about to see. It uh, folds out its thrusters in the opposite direction. And so it has to be controlled backwards. I still have a little Kerbal head there from the Rocket Profile video. The launch script just hands it over to me, and then I finish it off with this. So that's the launch fest in Realism Overhaul in Kerbal Space Program 1.7.1, and it is just the 1.6.1 version of Realism Overhaul being used in 1.7.1. Some mods seem to have issues, especially the visual stuff, and Scatterer hasn't been updated. Uh, everything else seems to be working okay, even though Real Solar System, when you start up KSP 1.71 will say that's not compatible. Well, it, it is Earth down there. One quirk, the time warp steps are incorrect. It's the stock time warp steps and I haven't figured it out. Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.